<laughs> okay, well, here we go. Welcome, uh, Will. Uh, this is Will Day. He's a Colorado artist. Uh, I know that you have um, moved around a little bit, but uh, I have also done a little bit of research on you, but I tried to hold myself back too, because the questions that I want to ask you, I really want them to come authentically from me and not what I've seen or heard from various interviews and such. And although I do have to say that I really enjoyed your podcast, I think it's 2019 with Nina's Got Good News. Like I just thought, wow, that's so much fun. Anyway, everyone, um, Will Day. And um, I'm just asking you to share a little bit about, you know, yourself, how you got to where you are. I know that's a big story, so I might jump in with a couple of questions. So go for it. <laughs> well, how do you, nice to meet, meet you and, and, be part of your your community. So where would where do you want me to start? What's a good way to entree to? Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things that I um, was curious about, and I kind of know this, but not everybody else will. But just your journey to becoming an artist. Everyone has a unique journey, and some of us start, you know, at the beginning, and then don't do it and then come back later. Uh, some of us want it, but then blow it away or what have you. So uh, I know that you have uh, been on Wall Street, architecture, uh, Peace Corps, maybe sort of give us a little uh, journey as to how you got where, uh, where you got into art. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good start. I mean, the, the truth is we all are artists, right? I've always been creative. And I think part of our journey is to figure out how to use your creativity in the universe, okay? So yeah, I'm a painter right now, but I'm just as, you're just as creative as me, you know, we're, we're all in it together. So once I learned that I was a creative spirit, I was able to reflect on all these experiences that got me here. So yes, I started out at a young age. I always loved to paint, you know, and uh, took art classes in school. And I always was intrigued and that was the easiest thing for me. And I always did well in that. I'm like, ah, this is great. And then things got serious academically in school. And I realized that I struggled a lot with that type of format of being in a, in a classroom setting, very structured environment. And that was painful for me. And so I didn't know that I, you know, I have ADHD, like seems like everybody else does. And it's hard for me to focus, but you know, back in the seventies, it, you know, that wasn't talked about. So I was, I was trying to use my, my talents in a way that I didn't know to really connect to the world. And that's where painting came in. And that's where people started relating to me. So I always wanted to be creative. I've always wanted to be part of the world. I always wanted to connect to the world. And I didn't know art was going to be my thing. I was a very, um, let's see, um, curious individual. Um, I love sports. And so sports got me into this, this place to really kind of define my personality not just painting. So when young, when I was growing up, I thought that, hey, I was going to be this great athlete, but I didn't, obviously that didn't pan out. Um, but I bring that up because the story really is about using all your experiences to become the artist that you are. And that is a very general term, but some artists are business people. Some artists are painters, some are poets, some are musicians. But the truth is, if you look at what God created us to be, creative spirits to relate to the universe, and as we get more wise and older, we recognize that it's simple, that God created us to be this loving human spirit that is creative and connects to one another. Now, we all do it differently. I took the wrong, a long path because after high school, I traveled a lot and I knew very quickly that all I was relating to was these amazing stories of history and art and architecture. And I just loved that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, I want that to be part of my, my dialogue. I want that to be part of my work and my adventure. You know, I think what this is all about is how can you be adventurous? How can you be curious? And how do you take each one of your experiences, good and bad, and apply them to where you are right now? So yes, I traveled a lot. I studied abroad. I decided to go in the US Peace Corps and I went to North Africa and Tunisia. And that's when things kind of exploded. And that's where I was like, whoa, I was on this, I was in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And I was like, ooh, the language is tough. Um, culture's different. I need to relate to people. And I started doing that through my art. 
And so I would do murals on, on sides of these stucco buildings. I would start art groups and bring people together. You know, it just seemed natural. And that kind of this idea of, I was all about the community and connection. And to me, connection was through creativity and painting. And um, I kind of honed in on that. That was when the, the call to action came because we all have these little jabs inside us. And they're like, hey, that feels right. That feels right. How am I going to act on it? But sometimes it may be not the right place in the time to act on it. But when I was in the Peace Corps from 94 to 96, I knew that that was a time for me to discover the world and be at a place where I could be accepting to things that are very different and mm -hmm. open up my mind. And once I did that, that channel of creativity started flowing right through me. I didn't have expectations. I didn't have to worry about money. You know, I mean, I did, but it was a different, I didn't, I don't have a family. And so I put myself out there in a very vulnerable situation. And I said, all right, I'm here. What do I do? And for wow. me, that action was, hey, wake up and let's let, let's let that divine spirit work through you. And for me, it was painting and language. And I couldn't stop painting. And, and I would send every day, I wrote water, I did you know, sketches and watercolors. I sent mail to friends and family. Um, and that was my, that was my grounding place. And so I built structure through that. So the Peace Corps was incredible because I love history. I love, uh, I, I love the Middle East. I love North Africa. And that was a major turning point in how I define my art practice today. So after the Peace Corps, I came back and reality set in. And then I go for, I, I'm an extreme type of guy. So I knew that the only way to really discover things is really put yourself in places that are very different. And if you can do that, you will see these magical moments come to you. And they're hard and they're tough, but you'll wake up and say, I'm glad I challenged myself. So I go from the Peace Corps to Wall Street. I grew up. <laughs> I wanted to make money. I wanted to learn about capitalism. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to provide for my family. And it just seemed that was the normal route. People like, I don't understand. Well, I grew up outside of New York City. And so a lot of friends and families, they worked there. So I thought that was what people did. Right. So, I mean, it wasn't because I was better or cooler. Or I went to Harvard Business School. Not. <laughs> I just did what everybody was doing. And so I commuted into the city after, you know, 96 to 99 and worked for this financial company called Bloomberg Financial Markets. And that was one of the best experiences I could have in, uh, in learning about capitalism and, and sales and marketing and strategy. And I also met my wife there, too. So yeah. it was a huge, huge. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was almost, it was timeless. But I bring that up because all this is about a journey. Mm -hmm. And the journey, I it wasn't someone didn't tell me, go out and do all these different things. But I think the true people who are really happy in the universe are the ones that are really not afraid to kind of take risks. Mm -hmm. The risk doesn't mean to be like, hey, I'm going to put bet the whole house. Here we go. Here's my $10 million. We're going big time. No, it's put yourself in these places that you can sort of see small victories. And for me, I was still young. And I was able to take some risk and challenges. And, and that was a massive financial risk, but it was more personal, mental, psychological, spiritual risk. And I grew from that. And the Peace Corps and working in Wall Street and Bloomberg gave me a chance to really define my, my skill sets and saying, hey, what am I really good at? What am I really bad at? Yeah. You know, I knew how to, the, the key was, can you fail fast? And if you fail fast, learn from it. That's what Bloomberg really put me out there and said, oh, whoa, I am really not good with numbers. I'm not quick on my feet. I'm not as analytical as I am, but I'm creative. I'm smart. I'm a good people person. I'm a great connector. I, I can get things done. I know how to execute. So I, I found my own role within that organization. You really saw then um, your your highlights and your lowlights, or like you said, your assets and the things that maybe, you know, that's not your forte. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I want your audience to understand like the journey is like, once you realize that this is not about me, it's about me being part of a higher being. And that is being part of the path of joy, creativity, and love. That spiritual movement will transcend to not only my family, but everybody else around us. 
Now we may be, that may be too ethereal, but the truth is by being authentic in your own self, everything else will happen. And yeah, I have an ego. I'm very selfish. I want to get in the Museum Monarch. I want to sell a million dollar painting. I want blah, blah, blah. Well, we, we all hear what the art world tells us we want to hear, but we have to sort of sit back and say, well, who are we? And who are we trying to impress? And what is the ultimate goal when we get in our studio and we paint? You know, that is a massive, um, important kind of ideology every day because it changes. And we don't want to be influenced by everybody else, what they're telling us. And so it's very hard to calm down, sit, and, and not be critical because I've been judged and I've been criticized by some of the biggest art critics, which I cannot believe have just eaten me alive on social media. I'm like, I am not even asking for it. And they see me so differently. So that's a whole nother story. But I want to make sure that this initial conversation is really about this journey of embracing your own kind of um, your own chaos. You know, I, I, I did a TED talk about this, about finding creativity in the chaos. Well, what does that mean? It's like, well, chaos can be very difficult. It can be very calming, but it's always evolving and changing because there's no straight line in life, right? So the, you embrace it or you don't. You fight it or you don't. You make it part of your journey and say, accept some of those things because there's going to be ups and downs. And then you'll really, you'll be able to move forward in a way that you'll be completely surprised because nothing is going to be perfect. So. Yeah. Uh, the ducks don't all line up. Newsflash. <laughs> Not the way you want anyway. And I love what you said about that because if you can take what's going on and use it to your highest level, then you'll you'll glide. If you fight it and and wish it wasn't so. One of the phrases um, that I hear sometimes is, oh, what a shame. And I think I don't even want to think about what what a shame that is. Like it is what it is. Let's just pivot and figure out, you know, how to get the the nugget out of this, right? Those are lessons. I mean, so I want this to be a very informal dialogue, but the dialogue is really like, I've been painting full time for 15 years. I was like, oh, I figured it out. I know how to manage it and know how to sell. Every quarter is a whole different experience. Yeah. Every year and season, I'm like, whoa, what? But I'm trying to find those nuggets that really say I learned for something and I'm doing it differently and I'm not afraid to change. And I'm open to receive this um, wonderful kind of energy that comes your way. And you either deflect it or you don't, because I can't control the art mark. I can't control my clients. I can't control how I feel, but I can control my ability to sort of just hopefully be calm, respect what's going on around me, and allow that divine intervention to kind of channel through me and just get out of the ego and just be creative. That yeah. Takes lot of practice and discipline but one of the things that I love that I hear from you whether it's from interviews or looking at your work or your approach is your curiosity and your openness to it like you seem to be quite I'm sure you struggle with it too at times but there's this openness to well what what does this mean what is this for what can I invite in how can I you know, I've, I've sort of got that feeling from you from a number of your interviews and just even your work or um, this, this painting you did for a restaurant. I thought, oh my God, you know, it's massive, but you were, you had the idea to make this one large one that you could walk through, but also that you were exploring what the team, the chefs, the tools and how you could change your tools or explore your tools. I just thought, wow, I just love that really curious mind that you have that you bring into your work. It's, it's fascinating and it's really revitalizing. It's inspiring. Oh, I thank you. I mean, I, I do that because I don't want to get bored. Yeah. I mean, it's lonely. It's really, <laughs> you know, we, everybody can relate to this. I'm not saying anything different. And so you know, sometimes when you do a commission or you're painting for a show and or exhibit, it's fun to kind of explore and not worry, you know, but we want to, we want to create this, these awesome, you know, series, a collection and body of work that's going to be sellable and incredible. But sometimes it just takes, 
you know, one client or one experience like that where I was working with this top chef. He was a top chef. He won top chef and wonderful one of those shows. And um, he invited me into his experience and I wanted to feel what it was like to walk in his shoes every day as a chef behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and sort of understand how his creativity really flourishes and changes the, the space through his food, his tastes, his shapes, his sizes, his textures, his colors. And it's just like what we do. And so yeah. that was really special. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you took it though, and you processed it. Like I was listening to that interview for a second time the other day. And I thought, wow, like, wow. I mean, it wasn't just an intellectual information gathering. It kind of, it kind of like soaked into you and then came out in your tools, in your paint. I love that. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I mean, I think that's, that's the discovery. That's the journey. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, a client or someone will tell you what they're thinking, but they may not really know how to express that. Yeah. So when you walk in the space or depending on who you're painting for, Sometimes it just happens, you know? And so, and it doesn't have to be for a big show, museum or the Whitney or whatever. I think the, the, real, the real talent is discovering the, the grassroot artist who's out there kind of dis rediscovering their voice mm -hmm. and seeing that, hey, wow, they're empowering themselves to be innovative and creative and become a great community leader, a husband or a wife or, you know, whatever, a father. and or grandfather or grandmother, whatever that role is. It's just, you give someone a little confidence, discover something that's brand new inside them, that's timeless and that's love. And that's exactly what the universe wants us to connect with. Absolutely. And I mean, what else is there really? Why bother with anything else anyway, right? And that's the challenge we face as artists because I've been critiqued by some big names and I was like, I cannot believe that blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, is that the industry of what art has gone to? They, they, they're very judgmental, but that's okay. I, I'm, I'm ex we're, we are exposing ourselves. Yeah. hundred percent actors, you know, writers, musicians, we get it. But what's up with the art critic? It's like, I, I'm still baffled and confused. And I, it's still strange to me, you know, because all of us, it's not because, you know, I'm not better than anybody else. So that person's not better than me. Is it because now skin color, gender, sexuality, religious, it's like, so they put all those things in a category. Why don't yeah. they just blur out the, the individual and then just look at what's really happening and really open up to the heart and not sort of judge, you know, I don't know. It's just, it, it still, it irks me sometimes. I, I get that on a really small, um, you know, level experience. I remember the first time that somebody uh, said something really nasty about my um, post on Instagram. And I just thought, what? Said something like, you know, looks like something done from someone in a loony bin or whatever. And I thought, what? I'm just having courage to like explore. <laughs> like, if you don't like it, just keep going. And it really, really stung. And I, I, but, you know, I've had plenty since. So I've had lots of opportunity to just, you know, whatever, delete, block, whatever. But it does baffle me because I, I want to make a difference in my world by being better than I was yesterday, always. And that's with kindness. It's with my work. It's with whatever, you know. And so that kind of a gift to me, I don't understand what am I supposed to do with that? I don't really know other than, cause I don't like ignoring people either. I mean, I will, cause like, there's no point in engaging that kind of a conversation, but it, it's not my way of being to pretend like somebody doesn't exist. So that was actually quite confronting for me to have nasty business <laughs> tossed at something that I was trying to be courageous and encourage others to like, go for it, you know, follow your curiosity, like share. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a whole nother dialogue. But, you know, again, what I think we both learn and most artists will hear, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to participate in that, that transaction of that energy. So yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So someone doesn't have the courage. You know how easy it is to critique your work, my work, and say kindergarten can do that. You know, that's that's the that's the cop out. What's not yeah. what's really interesting is saying what's beneath that individual that's creating those type of really spiritual, colorful colors that are like, you know, hopefully shining light to the universe. In other, remember, there's a lot of different stories and narratives being told on yeah. paintings, which are amazing. Yeah. But for me, and I think you, is it's really about, you know, transcending the now to the future. What do we want the future to look like? Mm-hmm. We're not mm-hmm. going to be putting ourselves on the box and saying, listen, I respect all type art. You know that. But there's always, there's a time period for that. I'm always trying to look ahead mm-hmm. in the universe, which a lot of artists do. And you may not like my stuff. You may think it's childish or it's too abstract or it's not colorful enough. But, it, but really what comes from that is I'm really tuning in to that, you know, that, that authentic experience as I look around and saying, wow, that's, that makes me happy. And then that's some, something evolves from that. And it's learning. You want artists to let go. You want artists to be free. You want us to explore. Because then if we don't explore, we're going to miss out on the maybe the magical moments and the masterpieces that will come. So, yeah, I might, I've created a lot of art in 15 years, but, maybe, you know, the masterpiece hasn't come yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm still seeking. And if you <laughs> seek, you will find. This is true. This is one of the things that I say to as many artists as I can and the ones in my mentorship is, you know, open yourself up to ask questions because then answers start to come. It's like listening to your curiosity. And if you have an idea, follow it, see what happens. If it didn't work, no big deal. Um, Now you know that didn't work for this thing, but it might be great for something else. Uh, So not to be afraid and, and yes, we do have fear, but to go and do it anyway, because it's through fear that you grow. It's not avoidance. It's through, it's like, yeah, that's just a thought anyway. It's actually hasn't even happened yet. You know? I think that's a very important element is fear. Like I, if you can teach, talk to your, your members about Think about times that you've either conquered your own fear. It could be very small and it could be very large. Like for me, speaking in public is tough. And doing my TED talk, I was scared as can be, but I knew I could do it. But the format of what a TED talk is, is so structured. It is, listen, there's no ad living going on. Every single TED talk has a major structure to it. There is no, not a lot of ad living going on. You memorize that thing. Wow. I was impressed. I listened to that. I was, like, wow. I was like, oh, I could talk. No problem. They're like, mm, not going to happen, dude. Here's your story. Here's your script. Here's your writing coach. Here's your speaking coach. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm already fearful. I, I can't Oh, my even- God. Oh, no. They're like, no. So I bring that up because that was something that was fearful, that was creative because I was talking about the journey of – you know, the call to action for each one of us. And that is I use creativity to change my life and hopefully change the life of people around me. And I don't take that for granted anymore. I was floating. I was flailing. I didn't have any foundation. You know, either you have spiritual foundation, you have religious foundation, but if you don't have a, you know, kind of a purpose on how to apply that, you're going to get lost. And so I had to overcome that feeling, say, yes, I am an artist. I am, I'm going to accept the challenges of what it feels like to be an artist. Not saying star, but like, I have to figure out how to make this business work. Because this is what I know is what the universe is telling me to do. It may be different than what the culture is telling me and how to live and raise my family. But I know this is it. This is it. (laughs) I love that fervor you just demonstrated for us. It's fantastic. Remember, you know- seek freedom. Seek your way to live in this world. Whatever it is, that will allow you to feel free, allow you to create, allow you to be yourself, allow you to find your voice. I love that. I'm going to um, end our conversation, if that's okay with you, with that 
I just want to say thank you so much. This has been so much fun. It's been so much fun. You're so easy to talk to. But I think that's what it should be, right? I mean, you and I are not mysterious. We are in our creativity, but remember that we want to be the new face of how art is really presented. And, we, you know, we don't all have gallery representation. We are all, that, that's awesome. Sometimes we do. But the truth is, like, the individuals want to really seek us. And we all have our own ability to communicate and, and talk and describe our work. And that is very important. But I think what's really also important is to really um, be out there. And, and we're already exposing yourself on canvas. It's okay to kind of visually talk and be in front of your know, people. And that's what I seek too, because that's part of being an artist, being part of the community. And I, I relish in that. And I think that's how we grow and I learn because it's in being in the cave here, I love it, but we gotta, we gotta take this vessel into the universe and start flying everywhere. And that yeah. means we can talk and, and do different things to really connect with people. Yeah, and I find that's really valuable in, in an expansive way for my own mind that, you know, I can get, I don't know why this is, I love organizing things and I did go to design school, but I can get so crunchy on balance and, uh, you know, composition, but I still want to have this essence in as well. And that balancing of, freedom and play and composing that that the a piece that feels good to me um so having a conversation with you um has been a nice reignition of don't get so stuck in composing that you forget to bring in spirit and energy and what the landscape is uh its effect on me and joy and curiosity, all that. Not that I feel like I do, but sometimes I think, God, you can be so analytical, Pauline. Like, just open up. When you open up, like, I can too. We know when it works. When we, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not a micromanager. I'm not, that's not how I work. I'm a big picture guy. I want to be able to just attack the canvas. It's very physical. That's why I love the big canvases. So once I start sketching it out, I'm like, <laughs> like, what is going on? It is so uncomfortable to me. Wow. But other people, listen, they're doing figurative work. They're doing nudes, whatever they're doing. And they got it. And I get it. But I'm also saying, take that, explode that and see something that your mind's like, oh my gosh, look at those colors and relationships. That reminds me of tree. That reminds me of the ocean. That's a mountain. That looks like my mother. Or I can't believe that was a scene from like being in Newport Beach or in British Columbia. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I couldn't do that if I had the force and look at a photo. This is it. That's it right there. That's it right there. Because of your expansiveness and your exploration of your spirit and freedom, you see more feel more relate more because you haven't come in with a direction and so that is where the joy of what i do every day and i come into paint i get surprised every day i don't know sometimes like one of these paintings i did and i'll tell the audience i mean there's a painting you'll see on my website i don't know what the names are but then someone i you know sometimes i have coaches or people look at it like well, you know who that is? I'm like, what? This one is called Metatron. I'm like, Metatron, what? You know, Metatron is the most you know, powerful besides Jesus and someone else. He is, you know, sacred geometry. He's behind the scenes in the universe putting things together. There he is showing up in my paintings. But it is a metaphor to hmm. say, I'm out in the universe saying, hey, I'm seeking. I invite them here. Let's go have fun. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, when I try to force a piece, like a commission piece, I'm like, so rigid. When I don't, I brought that term up because the painting and the names come to me afterwards. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. I hope that makes sense to the audience because there's, I, again, in my TED talk, once you let go of your expectations of how you're going to live your life, your creativity is going to start flowing like no tomorrow. 
I mean, I it was it. lava flowing out of the volcano. The creativity started hitting. I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't grab enough of it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You've said some really, really juicy things right now. I might have to include this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that always comes up in the end. That's why you always say, hey, tell me a little about yourself. I'm like, uh, I was born in New York City in 19 uh, blah, blah. That's able- why I, I said, just say what you want to say because, you know. But anyway, this has been so much fun, Will. Really, truly. You're just a gem to chat with. Well, I appreciate it because it's... I want to be able to transfer that to you and to your audience too. And then I can learn from you guys as well, because if we expand this, um, this dialogue, it's, I don't have the answers. I'm just trying and I'm seeking yeah. and I want all of us to seek and I'm not better than you or anybody else, but you would, ex- you want me to go and explore because remember we need more people exploring and not being held in a box. Exactly. So that's when the innovation and creativity really hits. And the last thing I'll tell is that, you know, in the time of COVID, and I know, you know, I don't bring that word up because that's not my thing. I created some of the most powerful, beautiful, colorful pieces, totally transforming the negative and the fear into the most powerful light that ever existed for me. Now I translated that into say, guys, let's look back to the 1400s. What do you think happened then? Yeah. Black death. Oh boy, plague. Then what came about? The Renaissance. What is Renaissance? It means rebirth. It means reshifting your ideas. It's re renewing. What came from there? Incredible enlightenment. Yeah. So if we don't learn from that, what are we doing? Yeah. We keep holding on power and control. You see that in the narrative of these people. But then again, you see these other innovators like, wow. We, we need those. Yeah. So anyway, I want to make sure that whatever you choose, choose wisely, but you know there is hope when you use creativity as your call to action to really move forward to change not only yourself, but change the world around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll stop recording that'll stop help that. <laughs> that'll help us stop talking where's my mouse 